Hey there everybody, Eric from Outer Limitless coming at you today with another video. Now in today's video we're going to take another look at this Granite Gear Blaze 60. If you haven't seen my prior video with my basic overview and basic initial impressions on this bag, I suggest you take a look back at my tabletop review. But at this point I have had the opportunity to use this Granite Gear Blaze 60 at very significant length. I had this on a wonderful backpacking trip, I used this as my carry option, and what I wanted to prove about this Blaze 60 is if it would be the perfect bag for your beginner, somebody getting into this hobby, looking to make that purchase for the very first time, getting a bag, and would this be the bag for them? But I also wanted to see if this would be a good bag for somebody who's looking to advance a little bit. Maybe you're already into backpacking, but you have slightly heavier gear. Maybe you just want a new backpack, you're looking for a new carry option. Would this be a possible option for you? And if you're a little more advanced and you've been at it for a long time, you're just simply looking to lose some pounds or maybe even carry a decent amount of gear with a bag that's not super heavy, would this Blaze 60 be a suitable option? So what we're going to do is take a look at this Blaze 60 out on the trail. Then after that, we're going to compare it against the Granite Gear Crown 260 as well as the Osprey Atmos 65. Now at this point, as I mentioned, I have used this at length. I definitely have my opinions about this and I'd love to share my thoughts with you. And if you're interested in seeing a little bit more about what I'm about to talk about, do me a favor, stay tuned. So this is kind of like a pre-hike ritual, weighing up my pack to see how much it weighs. And you'll see here I have this Granite Gear Blaze 60 outfitted with some pretty good gear. Now this particular hike is a little bit of a bridge season, so it's not spring, it's certainly not winter, but I basically need to plan on some adverse conditions, kind of a little bit cold at night, possibility for some pretty good snow still so I have sort of a hybrid kit here where it's certainly not lightweight it's capable of sustaining me overnight in some pretty adverse conditions as well as potentially hitting some really tough conditions while I'm on the trail so as I step on the scale here 170 pounds even so nice and light 170 pounds right on the nose and now I'm gonna put on my pack as well as holding this bag which has the food that I'm going to prepare tomorrow morning and get loaded up into my kit. And so now, getting on the scale, 211.6. So that puts me at 41.6 pounds. So like I said, certainly not lightweight. This is a bridge sort of kit here where I know I'm getting into some pretty dodgy stuff. And so having a good amount of gear with me is definitely a must. So I'm excited about this particular bag. I think it's going to carry very well. And the next time you're going to see it, it'll be tomorrow while I'm out on the trails. So we've got a pretty good day ahead of us. Got um at minimum five miles of hiking till we get to our campsite and then from there if things go well we're talking about another ambitious uh five five and a half miles up to a summit and then five and a half miles back so we're in for a pretty substantial day 15 maybe 16 miles if things go well so far so good, nice and comfortable, even with a modest load. Uh, this feels really good. Uh, we're probably a little over a mile into our hike and this pack is definitely comfortable. It's not digging into my shoulders, I mean I do feel it, but there's nothing to be really uh, done about that. It's the nature of a pack with this much weight and you can see I'm pretty well loaded up here. So generally speaking, very comfortable on my hips, feels great. 
sits right where I need it to and all my gear is convenient right where I need it. So, so far, this is excellent. So the back's been nice and comfortable, definitely venting nicely, no moisture build up here. My back feels great. I'm looking here, I don't know if that's green from my shirt or what, but just keep an eye on that. But I don't think it's any issues. Um, definitely very comfortable. Shoulder straps are good and everything's staying nicely in place. Not bad, it's nice terrain. This will be a sweet hike in the fall. So now that we're at camp, taking a look, I mean, I didn't really get rained on or anything like that, not substantially anyway, I mean a little mist, but most of the water you see is basically coming off of the trees as we were bushwhacking. You'll see there's plenty of needles and stuff, but anyway, as I open this up, everything is definitely still nice and dry. You'll see the back has a little bit of moisture just where it wasn't covered by the head pack, but the rest of this is definitely in great shape. So as far as getting the stuff out of my bag, I'm basically going to keep the top shut and I think work out of the side zip here. So there is this side zip now. I probably need to undo my compression straps to really open this up all the way. But for now, I just need a couple of things. Like for example, I just need to pull out my hammock. So that worked and I just need my straps. So that worked. So that's pretty convenient. I actually like that. If you know where you have your stuff situated that you need to get to early on, it might be a good idea just to access it right through the side. And at this point, I mean, I can just zip this up again and move on if I had to, or at least it's not all spilling out all over the place. So, so far that's pretty nice. And I actually like the fact that I can keep these compression straps in there, kind of hold everything tight and together. So using the med kit from VanQuest here, You'll see this worked out very well. Bolted it on the outside of the bag, which worked out kind of nice. I used one of these little Grimlocks here to keep it in place and also attached it using the actual bag's compression straps. So here you'll see one coming through here. Now this knife is actually molly clipped onto the pack. So at that point, the fact that it's kind of grabbing on helps to keep everything in place. And then you'll see it goes through here. So. I also have another one rooted up through the top here, so it's nice and secure, and I also was able to attach my tarp, so because the Granite Gear Blaze 60 did not have good attachment points on this particular part of the pack, I was able to utilize the straps of this VanQuest pack to make it work. So it's the next day, all packed up, and getting ready to carry this Granite Gear Blaze 60 on the way out of here. We definitely have a grueling hike ahead of us. Uh, conditions are definitely not in our favor, but that comes with the territory. So if we're gonna have some fun, kind of got a struggle too at times. But with that, I can say that this bag carries great. I have greatly enjoyed it. I feel awesome today. And sometimes when you have the wrong bag, you can't necessarily say that. I mean, my shoulders are a little bit sore. My hips are just a little bit sore. But generally speaking, it's not really the fault of the bag. It's just the nature of the beast. It's the amount of gear I have in here. It's the overall weight of the equipment kind of wearing on me. 
but it doesn't bother me. I'm not like overly sore. There's no major hot spots. It carried the weight very well. I've had generally good organization and the ability to carry my stuff pretty much the way I wanted with a couple of little nuances. I enjoyed working out of this bag. That was another part that I greatly enjoyed. Just working out of the bag was easy. I had no problem getting to my gear and keeping it organized the entire trip. And sometimes the bag can make or break that part of the experience. So all in all, I have to say, I am quite impressed. So now that you've seen my trail footage, what do I think about this bag? Well, there's no doubt Granite Gear is making a beautiful product here. Overall, I very much like it. I think it's comfortable. I think it holds an appropriate amount of gear reasonably well. I have to say there are a few things about this bag that if Granite Gear could change it, it would put it in a 10 out of 10 category for me. But the things that kind of hold it back, to me, make it more of maybe an 8 out of 10. So generally speaking, for somebody who's looking to get into the backpacking sport, I do think this is a good quality, suitable option. I have gone through a big iteration of bag after bag after bag, trying to find something that works for me. Now, when you get the Blaze 60, there are some major advantages. The fact that a, it's comfortable. B, it holds a reasonable amount of gear for many different scenarios. And C, it can actually hold up to 50 pounds. That to me is a very good thing. Now, I bet you this could carry even more than 50 pounds reasonably comfortably. And that's the thing about a beginner. A beginner is going to have slightly heavier gear. They're going to have bulkier gear. And they need to accommodate that. So this Blaze 60 can certainly do that. Overall, I found the back to be very comfortable. I think the shoulder straps were perfect. I think the hip belt fit on a perfect location, right on my hips where I needed it. The back panel was definitely comfortable. There is one little phenomenon. I can see people are potentially going to give this bag a little bit of a hard time if this doesn't fit you well. The key being that you do have adjustability. So if you take the time to set this up properly, I don't think you'll find this to be a problem. However, on the very top of the bag, if you look at where the shoulder straps transition, you can potentially feel this little area where the mesh drops off and then the sort of plastic is exposed. Now I'm not saying the plastic is necessarily sitting against your back, but this does have the sort of slightest contour kicking out just a little bit where that kind of sits up around your shoulder blades. I could feel it. It didn't bother me. I think I had this bag pretty much set up the way I needed. And I could also see if you didn't set this up right, that that might potentially bother you. But some things that were wonderful. The pockets on the hip belt were great. I really love and greatly enjoyed the idea that these can be raised up and it exposes this loop. You could potentially, as I did, include a dump pouch. You could connect either maybe a sidearm or you could connect a knife. There are a number of different things you can do with the fact that this strap is exposed here and the pocket just sat down reasonably well right back on top. And even if it didn't sit down perfectly flush, I don't think it would be detrimental to the comfort or the carry quality at all. The side pockets on this bag are absolutely phenomenal. I love these side pockets. They did a great job. They held my gear perfectly. I have to say that of all the bags that I have, I really think that these particular side pockets are maybe amongst the best. Now, at first, when you look at them, they look like they're this like, crazy, hanging out, oversized thing. That is definitely not the case once you get this bag loaded out. And the fact that you have this nice, large pouch gives you the ability to put different types of gear. I put some food in here. I definitely put my water bottles. I had all my different equipment fit in here wonderfully. Now on this particular trip, I did not use the front mesh pouch. I can't really speak to it too much. 
I did need a little more volume in this bag. So I had my VanQuest pouch strapped onto the outside of this to give me a little more room, a little more capacity. But the most important thing to me that that VanQuest pouch allowed me to do is connect my tarp on the outside of the bag. If I wasn't able to get my tarp on the outside of the bag, I really would not have had enough room for the gear that I needed on that trip. So if you look at the bottom of this bag, another one of my downfalls is the fact that there is no ability to connect anything to the bottom of this backpack. Personally, I really enjoy the ability to get my tent or my shelter system onto the bottom of my pack. And if not all the way on the bottom, at least lower towards the back of the pack. And that's the thing with some other bags out there, you do have the ability to do that. Now a 60 liter bag is a decent size overall. However, you do need to think about the season that you're going in. The particular season I use this bag is a bridge season. It's not summer yet. It's not really even a nice spring day it's closer to winter and when you get into winter camping you need more gear you need more warmth and you need things that maybe are a little bit bulky so a 60 liter pack gets tight now the premise of this video is is this pack something that could work for everybody could it get a beginner started well a beginner has a lot of costs you can't necessarily buy multiple bags from multiple seasons so if you could just buy one pack and it got you as far as you needed through the winter through the spring all these bridge seasons and into summer efficiently that to me would be exactly what you want and I think in order to be able to really pull it off you would need some straps on the bottom so if I had one major critique and my biggest critique of this granite gear bag is the lack of straps on the bottom and if they even wanted to save weight just having a removable strap on the bottom would certainly do it they've created removable straps on other parts of the pack so why not do that on the bottom as well but other than that I think everything worked very well for me I did not carry a hydration bladder I simply had water bottles that worked fine the head pack was a nice size my gear fit in here reasonably well the carry and quality and the comfort was definitely there and even going through some really difficult conditions bushwhacking really hacking this bag through branches and getting tugged on absolutely no problem so the quality's there the durability's there and at least in my initial testing now the one thing I do need to point out and I've talked about this before with these granite gear bags you just want to be very careful about the back mesh panel so I did pay close attention to how I put my bag down I paid close attention to how I protected this back mesh panel and I think overall it was definitely successful so at this point what I want to do is roll in a couple of other thoughts about other bags and the first one to talk about is the Granite Gear Crown 260. So now that we have the Blaze 60 and the Crown 260, well what does that mean? Which one of these bags would you go to and why? When would you use one versus the other? And do you really need at this point as a company to have both of these bags? Well here are my thoughts. Unlike the Blaze 60, the Granite Gear Crown 260 does not have adjustable shoulder straps. You can buy it in different sizes. You can also buy the Blaze 60 in different sizes to get you close to your torso length and size. But with the Crown 260, the inability to fine tune your shoulder straps, I found personally I'm right in between sizes. I'm between a regular, I'm between a large. That leaves this at a little bit of a disadvantage. Now this bag is a little bit lighter than the Blaze 60. So if you're looking to shed some pounds and you find as though you can get the bag tailored to your size the way you need to with the available options, by all means, this would be a great and suitable option. You really don't gain too much more with the Blaze 60 other than the fact that this Granite Gear Crown 260 is quoted to be able to have roughly a 35 pound load capacity. Now I personally have carried more than that. I've carried 41, 42 pounds with ease. Didn't have any problem. It carried perfectly comfortably. I've seen other reviewers that had a problem with the comfort of the shoulder straps. I personally did not. I felt this was a good quality bag and fit me well. But 
the limitation in the weight capacity might be something you want to consider when thinking about either the Granite Gear Crown 260 or the Blaze 60. I do honestly prefer the look of this Crown 260 much more than the Blaze 60. I understand wanting to advance and change things and come up with different designs. I'm not going to hold that against Granite Gear. However, I don't personally like the sort of checkered look of the Blaze 60. I think it's kind of, I don't know, country looking to me and it's just not my thing. I'm more of a tactical looking guy. I don't typically like things that are sort of backpacking looking. I prefer to blend into my background. I prefer to have things that are more muted colors. So to have a checkerboard pattern on the outside of my bag is just a little bit funny. But I guess what I'm saying is would I ultimately choose the Crown 260 over the Blaze? Well, your side pockets are a little bit limited. The overall capacity is about the same and the overall general functionality is about the same. The weight is not that far off. And when you look at the limitation to your ability to fine tune this, I'm not sure that at this point I would naturally gravitate any more towards the Crown 260 than the Blaze. I think the Blaze gives you some additional overall features that put it on top. And what about my original go-to option, my original bag that I would have basically said to anybody, you should own one of these, the Osprey Atmos 65. Now for me, the Atmos 65 was the bag I would always take when I had an oversized load, tons of gear, carrying for myself and my kid. I would bring this in the winter time. The ability to get all my gear lashed on here, no problem, is definitely a plus. But this does come at a weight premium. All the straps, the additional weight of the harness system, the slightly heavier fabrics put this at a premium weight when you're talking about trying to save pounds. So that's the thing again. What if you're trying to kind of get into the sport and be efficient from day one? You know down the line you want to lose pounds. You know down the line saving weight in your big three is a must. So having a bag day one that's a little bit lighter, that Blaze 60 might be the way to do it. There's no doubt that the Osprey carry system is one of the most comfortable ever. I don't think I've had a better carrying bag, even at weight. And that's the key with the Osprey Atmos 65. You have this beautiful anti-gravity system, the harness system, the carry quality is there. The only thing I give this harness system at all a hard time over is it kind of creaks when you walk. It's like, and over the miles, it could be a little bit annoying. It kind of disappears. I don't really hear it after a while, but there is some kind of creaking going on and just a little bit of that sort of rubbing sound. It doesn't bother me. I can't hold it against the bag. There's no doubt this is a beautiful option, but the question is, would you rather have a 65 liter bag or a 60 liter bag if you're able to shave some weight? The other advantage to the Osprey Atmos 65, again, the ability to strap all kinds of gear to the pack, and most specifically, you can put your shelter system, you can put your tarp, you can put your tent, or a number of other things nicely on the outside of the pack. That's a huge advantage. So, in conclusion, I feel as though, at this point, I would either have to give somebody the recommendation of do you want the flexibility and versatility that you get with the Osprey Atmos 65 or do you want to already start shaving some weight? And I don't want to make that compromise. So essentially what that means is my recommendation would be to Granite Gear. Create the connectivity on the outside of this bag for your shelter system. And if you do that, you have hit that sweet spot where you get the best of all worlds. You get the carry quality, the comfort, the overall fit and finish, the features, the ability to manage weight, the ability to get bulky gear in here, as well as slimming this bag down when you need to. I mean, look how tight I have this right now. I have this completely compressed down. It is a tiny package. That is awesome. You can't really do that with the Osprey Atmos 65, but you can with the Granite Gear Crown 260. So if you just add one feature, the ability to strap something onto the outside of this for your shelter, this is an absolute home run. So can I recommend this to everybody? 
absolutely. It's going to work. It's going to perform. It's going to be a great bag for you. I think with a little tweak in a future iteration, this thing's a 10 out of 10. And I have to say, overall, Granite Gear, you've done a nice job. So again, I'd like to say thank you very much to the people at Granite Gear who have provided this for review. I'm going to continue to work with this bag. I'm going to continue to look at it in further detail. My hope is to get this on somebody's back who has never gone backpacking before. And that will prove to me whether or not this is a quality option for somebody looking to get into the backpacking sport. So all right guys, thanks for stopping by. I hope you like what you saw. I hope you found it a little bit informative. If you like what you saw, please like, share, and subscribe. And as always, thanks for stopping by. Take care now. I'll see you soon.